Happy 4th of July, America. It's the Kelly Ford Show, 4th of July edition. One of my dearest, oldest friends, Joe Denham. Uh, we are together, together again. I can see you. How are you? No, Look I'm going to just do this to prove hey. we're together for hey, a everybody. second. everybody. Mm-hmm. It's this high-tech multi-camera shoot look, too. You must not know a lot of old people. If I'm your oldest friend, I mean... Well, it's because neither of us is old. Oh, now that's in the shot. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Look, America, big birthday. Big birthday. I cannot wait. This is going to be a great 4th of July. Mm -hmm. I love a good sparkler. Okay. I love stepping on the remnants of an icy hot sparkler and just burning my foot. (laughs) Who doesn't love that? That's a pretty good sensational feeling (laughs) for the 4th of July. (laughs) Because truly, if you haven't done that, you haven't lived, in my opinion. I can smell the 4th of July. I can smell the sparklers. I can see the smoke. Um, I'm excited for the 4th of July coming up. It truly is. I I love summer. Mm-hmm. And I love it for, like, rando reasons. But I do love 4th of July. I'm definitely one of those, ooh, uh, I love a good fireworks I think living in New York made me love a good firework display when really, I mean, let's be real. It's kind of a, you're just sitting there watching. St- it really is not. I mean, I don't want to say it's nothing because it sounds kind of un-American to say it's nothing, but you're camping out forever. I think it's a big uh, show of what we can do if we get mad. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, look, we can blow this stuff up. If we're mad at yeah. you, we can really blow you up. Yeah. Look what we do for fun. Uh, yeah. You the, know? This is pretty. It's rattling the pavement. Do you want shock and all? Do you want shock and y'all? <laughs> Red, white, and you? This is just all. Oh, I mean, we're oh, doing this for fun. Oh, yeah. This, this is what we do in America yeah, for yeah. fun. July 4th. This is what we do for fun. That's great. That's I like slogan. that. Slogan. Write that down. Oh, yeah. So, and, and I didn't, I was the one in our family that was like, let's go buy fireworks and maybe blow one of our kids' eyes out. <laughs> they got two. Yeah. Well, g- growing up, we used to go to the county fairgrounds uh, in Ohio to watch the fireworks. It was the biggest and the baddest of the fireworks. Yeah. A guy by the name of Clyde Evans would put them on. Of course. It was. It, it would only be a guy named Clyde, Clyde Evans. Clyde Evans. And he had a grocery store. Did he have all his fingers? He had all of his fingers. He was about three foot nine. Mm-hmm. Tall fella. And he would pay to have this huge firework display put a on. A three foot nine guy he named... He was a short Clyde. guy. And he smoked a cigar and he owned... And you know what they call those now? What do they call them? Short kings. Short kings. Yeah. Because I was wondering, you can't say the M word anymore, right? No. No, don't. You can't say little people? Nice. No, just don't. So you, you got to say What do you anything. call it? I, short Kings. Short Kings. That's what all the kids are saying. I'm trying to keep you. So Short King, Clyde Evans, paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to put on the biggest exhibit that I'd ever seen as a little kid. And my dad would uh, always leave before the finale because he didn't want to get stuck in traffic. What? Yeah, yeah. So we always, I mean, for the first five years of my life, uh, seeing fireworks, I was probably eight or nine. I always watched the finale from the rear window of the car. What's your dad's name? His name was John. He John Denham? Yeah, John, John Denham. John Denham. Yeah. God rest his soul. He rest I his mean, soul. He was always in a hurry to get out of there. He's so that maybe, guy, though. He's That's that such guy. a dad thing to do. Hey, kids, the yeah, big yeah, finish yeah. is coming. Okay, We're going to miss it because daddy doesn't want it. Don't want to get stuck in traffic. Like we had anything better to do in nowhere, Ohio. That's that's the whole point of fireworks. That's like going, hey, we're about to win the war. Yeah, yeah the Rolling Stones are about to play Honky Tonk <laughs> Women. We should go. It's so the same thing. We're about to storm Normandy. Yeah, exactly. That don't jump out of the planes. This is a part of the show where it's called stopping short of the goal every time, kids. <laughs> yeah, that's Maybe like, that's why I linger a little too long in situations, Kelly. Maybe I just want to overstay because I'm like, I don't want to miss the finale. Dude. I never, I I guess this is why we're such good friends. Yeah. I never know when to leave. I never know when to leave either. Literally. I'm that, like, look, I don't want to miss some really great why, stuff. This is why we have Amanda. Yeah. Amanda, your manager, is the one who's like, guys. She's like, look, got to wrap it. Ra- because. We've it, been here since June, people. <laughs> June 1st. <laughs> you should have, you, the last month of this yeah. podcast was oh my so God. good. It was so good until she's we hit play. Fi- she's finally like, it's July 4th. Yeah, Do a podcast. Wrap it. Wrap it. No, but seriously, that was the thing. I wonder if that stuff, you know, going yeah. back, back to that stuff, you go, why do I just hang out until... 
uh, Until it's, it's all over. Yeah, it, it's over. And that, I so agree because... Obnoxiously over. I'm not <laughs> talking like it's over. Everybody leaves. It's like, I'm going to hang out here for a little while and just check things out. Right. I know all the people that sweep the floors at every you know, bar. No, there's a, you, you clearly have... <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Easy. I've created something there. <laughs> um, no, I agree. It really yeah. is. And I think people with us mm-hmm. don't like that. I don't think because, and I'm trying to figure out who was normal, them or us. Uh, not uh, us. Not us. I, I, I don't, really don't think it's It's not normal. normal to leave before the finale, right? But it, no. Okay. It, but it is also not normal to stay long after the finale is over. We need to find a happy medium. Yeah. The, like Bob Ross always said. You that's know. probably the title of our autobiography. Happy medium. <laughs> no, find a happy F- medium. Finding the happy medium. Leave already. <laughs> Get the <laughs> out of here already. Right. Leave already. Um, yeah, Fourth of July is coming yeah. up. I want to know, I think this is, always, I always did this on my radio show because I do think it's a good, like what's, it's not the Fourth of July unless I, to me, I, it, mm. I usually think of, holidays and food like i mm-hmm. do have to cook out potato I, salad potato salad potato salad yeah because you can't this that's one i don't normally eat yeah i don't know i mean i've it's been you know almost a year since i've had potato salad it's, it's coming a, up it's coming up here it comes it it's, should be called potato salad day a good too like my sister does a great potato salad and most recently i went early on macaroni salad but you can't a good oh Okay. Macaroni salad is not the same as is this old Irish German potato salad? No, oh. I like a mayonnaise mustardy yeah, yeah. potato yeah, salad yeah. with celery, maybe a Eggs. teeny little oh no, a little celery salt. You put celery salt. Celery, yeah. celery seed. Salt. Teeny little bit of seed. Celery seed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so salt. potato salad is my, I have to have it for yeah. July 4th. Yeah, and I do like, I got to have a, at least a sparkler. You can't always get the stuff that explodes. And you can't always get to a fireworks display. Are you good with fireworks? I mean, I, do you light fireworks and set them off? I, I, love, I love to be with dudes who do. Okay, dudes who do. And, I, and, and when my kids were little, um, my dude I was married to did not. Um, okay. And so... When they got old enough, I was like, "We're going to buy fireworks." <laughs> and you're going to learn how to do this because yeah. you're and a dude. Then, and then he was okay. I don't want to totally like say. No. Then he was like, "Okay," because we're from yeah. Kentucky originally. Yeah. So when we were kids, brothers and sisters growing up, me and him, we. <laughs> that was an inbred joke. I, I got it. it I'm really with you. I'm just so trying flat. to figure out where I. Can... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Love it. Anyway, it's uh, all relatable. Anyway, yeah, we did it. We did it a few years in a row. Nobody yeah. lost a finger, but yeah, I like to explode stuff. Are you exploding yeah. stuff this year? Um, probably do a little exploding. I'm not allowed to do a lot of exploding because, again, I take it too far. Shocking. I'm, I'm finding out that I am a, a guy of extremes. Yeah. What? You know, if, if you got a four foot one, we might as well have a six foot one. Yeah. You know? But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll blow some stuff. All of a sudden, you've got an AK 47. Yeah, exactly. Here I am. I'm storming a Capitol <laughs> with cherry bombs. You know? Yeah. Got a buffalo helmet on. <laughs> You, know? you don't even know who's in office. I, like, I don't know what's going on. I don't on. care. I'm yeah. just following this crowd. I voted for Putin. You know <laughs> <laughs> what happened with that? Yeah. How is he going to celebrate the fourth? I haven't. I haven't caught up since the initial. We're storming the castle. Yeah, yes, here we go. We're taking over. We're so, getting the Trojan horse, and off we go. By the time this airs, I don't know where that will be. However, yeah. Total sidebar. Mm-hmm. My favorite line from Princess Bride, okay. which is one of my favorite movies of all time, all right. is when the torture guy, the torturer, is torturing farm boy the torture and the the king stops by to see how it's going and he's like would you like to come in and watch me torture him <laughs> and the king says oh i couldn't possibly i've got a kingdom to the overthrow my wife's murder to plan i'm swamped <laughs> anyway um that took place right here in nashville i think yeah it did it did it did the Storming of the Castle or Princess Bride? I think that whole scenario you just went through. <laughs> I flashed to t- 16th <laughs> Avenue. I'm like, oh, my God, that sounds like a Tuesday. All right, 4th of July, mm-hmm. summer. Yep. Um, I do love summer. And just last week when I was in Louisville, Kentucky, my hometown, it made me think of something that I thought you would totally relate to because my daughter was here with the fam. Okay. And grow, I raised my kids in Colorado, as you That's knew. That's what I was thinking, yeah. As you knew. Yeah. And I forgot that she was so excited. At 23, she was out in the backyard last week going, fireflies. Yeah. Lightning June, one. Well, we don't actually don't say fireflies. June we're, bugs. We call them June bugs. You do? June bugs. They show up in June. Lightning bugs is what we call the them. The lightning bugs are June bugs. But in Colorado, 
that's a you don't have lightning bugs. Mm-mm. No, and I found out that the the males are the only ones that really fly, mm-hmm. and the females are the ones on the ground. Really, yeah, just waiting, that, just, just sitting waiting, there waiting, just tendering it up. Land on me, baby. Lounging. Look at this ass. Yeah. Look at this Look at lightable this. ass. <laughs> it's all lit my up. Ass is lit. Lit up like a sparkler. Lit up, lit up like a July Fourth sparkler. <laughs> Land June, on June that June bug ass. ass. But I mean, how weird is that? Like, of course, I guess all of the. I don't feel like we had them when I lived in New York either. No. I feel like it's a Southeast thing. We had them in Ohio and Indiana. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a, I don't know if it's the temperature or the terrain, you know. Also made me think of words that are like, like you said June bug. Because mm-hmm. I think of in in Kentucky, we called June bugs like the fat, squishy things, like almost beetles. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Not the mayflies. I don't even know what a mayfly Mayflies are those things that are about that big that just, yeah, they're don't, huge. Okay. Don't. All right, yeah, mayflies, June bugs. But like- Cicadas, so it, did you guys have cicadas that everybody called locusts, but they're actually cicadas? Yeah, we call them cicadas. Yeah, cicadas. I do love a good cicada. I ate a cicada once. A lot of meat in the tail. <laughs> that is- It's all meat. It No. It's I, like Red Lobster <laughs> for Kentuckians. <laughs> If you can't go to Red Lobster, eat a cicada. M's good eats. Good eats. But what do you say, like? What do you? <laughs> what do you say, like pecan or pecan? I say pecan. I grew up saying pecan. Me too. Caramel or caramel? Caramel. See, the I weird, say weird thing because you're the biggest redneck. But mm-hmm. Ohio is really Midwest. There, so is Kentucky, but everybody thinks Kentucky's the South. There are more rednecks in Ohio and Michigan than there Michigan. are anywhere in the world. Michigan's so I mean, it's redneck. Southern Canada and <laughs> Northern Georgia. It is crazy redneck. Michigan it is, is redneck. It is truly. It's like the most. You might, I mean, I was not, that sounded like I was about to launch into, you might be redneck. Oh, you might. You are the biggest redneck I know, honestly. I, I do very, I, I'm very, very, very rednecky. But uh, I also like red wine, you know? I'm like a very contradictory red. Nick red wine. wine. UB40. Was that Dad, the 80s or the 90s? That was, oh, was, that was the, 90s, the 80s. The late 80s. <laughs> but we should launch into the 90s because you're out on that oh 90s God. tour with Tom Lowe. I love the 90s. I went back to the 90s last night. Did you? Yeah, I went back to the 90s. You're in the 90s all summer. You're doing that (laughs) marina tour. Oh, yeah. The marina without the M. (laughs) (laughs) How'd you land on... Okay, so this is so cool. You're out... I mean, the 90s, by the way, all of a sudden, all the rage, everything. For me, 90s country, truly the best. I didn't like 80s country. You you didn't like the Earl Thomas Conleys and What's a Memory Like You doing in a Love Like This. There was some weird stuff going on in the 80s. Weird stuff. Some of that that T.G. Shepard stuff was just downright pornographic. (laughs) Lyrically pornographic. Yes. Like uh, War is Hell on the Home Front 2. You ever heard that song? No. Oh, my God. Look up T.G. Shepard, War is Hell on the Home Front 2. It is a porn. It is a porn in a song. Okay. Now I'm interested. I'm telling you, it's all right there. I was wasting my time with the (laughs) stones. I'm talking about getting the hell blown out of you. (laughs) (laughs) T.G. Shepard. But the 80s were so great for rock. But anyway, They were not so great for... That's a really great conversation. I think the 80s was maybe the best era for rock, the worst era for country. I feel like it was like very wishy-washy. I mean... It's like they were trying to figure it out. Yeah. They were trying to figure out. The 90s came on, coming in hot. Coming in hot. 1990 showed up, and here comes Billy Ray. The Judds. The Judds. Randy Travis. Garth. Garth. Why not me? Why you know? not me? Uh, we uh, The 80s had Charlie McLean. See? Don't even know. Well, she had that song, uh, Who's Cheating Who? And then Alan Jackson recorded it in the 90s. Oh, Alan Jackson, hit. Shania Twain. And you said, go, Hill. wow, the 90s was seriously probably one of the greatest times to live. Tra- yeah. Ex- to live. Exactly. Travis Tritt. Travis Tritt. I mean- Randy and- Travis was getting his stuff figured out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Then it, you know- And chick, tra- I mean, chicks in yeah. 90s country too. I mean, I mean, everything. I it was a big year for, it was a big year for crows. The 90s was huge for crows. Why? We had that movie, The Crow. Movie, yeah. The movie, The Crow. Yeah. Uh, Cheryl Crow. Yeah. Uh, black crows. Yeah. It, it, so many crows. We had to, crows. We had to start counting crows. <laughs> Music like a rock joke. <laughs> yeah, the crows kicked ass in the in the nineties. Crows 90s. kicked ass. A lot of crows, but who's your favorite? Like, if you had, it's so hard to pick in nineties. 
like who your favorite like through osmosis i played so much 90s country like literally you yeah. could throw a title at me and i'm sure i could come up with the lyrics you too probably yeah, I, I mean i i mean i lived it and breathed it that's what made me move to nashville but i think everything in the 90s was more appreciated yeah and it was i feel like it was pure too sonically right because yep. sonically it was right before Everything was so perfect, so you you still had a little, it, but also better than shitty old, like pre. You know what I mean? Like like the, like, like just you know piano playing. Uh, there eighties had the DX seven. Yeah, which had BTW, that. BTW. He's like an amazing. That's his thing. He's a piano player. He'll Billy Joel. He'll Billy. Yes. Uh, the the sounds to me like I can listen to a song and go that was 1994 because yes. I know when that instrument came out I know when that sound came out. I know when the Corgo and W came out with that piano patch yeah I don't know that but the, that's cool the DX7 the you know the Rollin DX7s were, were from the 80s they made the 80s it's every and every Journey song and the country guys put it in and maybe that's what threw 80s a little bit because they were using all the cool sounds from the rock bands to you know different storylines but the 90s is when they really started getting stuff figured out yeah you know and again it wasn't so pristine it was no. better than the old crackly yep. kind of like yep but it was still pure like the other thing you know to your point about you could tell most country songs for sure because i was more versed in country than than any other era because mm -hmm. that's i was so busy raising kids and you know having babies mm -hmm. that i i in some ways other pop culture I, I was good just to survive getting up at 3 a.m. every day doing a country morning show. Yeah. But to your point again, you could hear the first note of someone's voice at that time, and you'd be like, Alan Jackson, uh, Trenia Twain. Tracy Bird. Tim McGraw. I think that's one thing that's missing in country today. It is. It is he a, sounds a little like that. Yes. He's like, like, is that you never in the nineties had to go, is that Tracy Bird or Tracy Lawrence? Yep. You knew yep. they were great voices. The other thing I thought was funny was when I said everything was more appreciated and including music, I think Pizza Hut pizza tasted better in the nineties. I think you're right. Do you know why? Why? Because you had to get a phone book. <laughs> you had to scroll through the book. You had to go to the peas. Remember getting the phone book out to yeah. call on a pizza? Yeah. And then how many times did you call the wrong pizza place? Yeah. I mean, it was a thing. It was a process. And by the time you got your pizza, you appreciated it more. I think you're right. A pizza pizza does not taste the same today as it did in 1993. At least I, to me, it doesn't. I think you don't even think about some of those things anymore. Like I like did last night. I had not thought about it until last night. Really? Literally. I did not go back to the 90s until last night for a long time. I mentioned Camelot Music. Remember Camelot Music? I don't. It was I, the one how before. How do I not remember it, that? It was the one before Tower Records. Or Virgin. You know, a Virgin. And it was like. I hadn't thought of those names. Deb. Remember the clothing line Deb? No. Again, I was in a little bit. I was literally having babies. The Gap? I do. <laughs> the Gap still exists, dude. Still about the. Oh, yeah, but it started in the 90s. Like Remember the when the Gap, gap came out? The Gap was so huge. It was huge. It was on everybody's shirt. I know. It was simpler, too. Like, Nikes only came in two colors. <laughs> and that's when the Air Jordans came out. Yes. The Air Jordans are still the biggest selling tennis shoe on the planet. Yeah. And that's what, 40 years later, 30 years later? It was, it literally was, it sounds stupid, but it just was, it was more complicated, but it was more simple. Like, I still am a person, and my kids hate this, but I do like to get lost. Do you and know find what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, Remember I, when you used to have to go get the trip ticks from AAA when you were going to go on a trip? print them out. And the old lady would sit there with a highlighter and be like, no, this is under construction, so you want to take this route. Can you imagine? If you did that I today. I get so irritated now. Like, even when I know how to get someplace, I still put it in nav because I'm like, what's the fastest way to get there? Yeah, yeah. It's like when I went and talking about the Counting Crows, I thought about going to the record store and standing there and buying, waiting to buy August and Everything After by the Counting Crows. And it was the greatest. Is that the one, uh, uh, December? Mr. Jones. No, the December is, that's, that's, that's their my second favorite, one. One of my favorite that's songs That's a great song, too. But Mr. Jones oh. and Round Here. Oh, that's and, a great. Oh, uh, 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 uh Omaha and all those songs you, you sit and just put that thing on and, but I think the thing that made it great was it was a process to get it 
I had to go to the store and wait. Yeah. And I, when I got it, I That's could not fair. wait. And I opened it. Remember how hard it was to open CDs? Yeah. And they had all that stuff in there. And then you sit and you put it in. And by the time you got to your pizza, <laughs> pizza hut pizza that you called in from the phone book, listening to a CD, it was- That's hilarious. It was a process to get to it. Now there's not a process. Now it's like, you know, I could literally, you know, door dash a pizza here right now and be the best pizza ever. And I could Spotify a song. And if I get tired of it, I just quit eating the pizza and quit listening to the song and go on to something else. Yeah. I don't think things are appreciated like they were in the 90s. That's 1,000% fair. I just, to check this out, I live in an apartment building now, and I have no idea because most people in my apartment building are under 30. I have no idea who would be throwing away an old school boom box. <laughs> I mean, no, th- it's this yeah. big. And, and I took it out of the trash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because I'm that person. Please tell me there's a video of this somewhere. I'll I'll bring it in. There's not a. Tr- I am a dumpster diver. Okay. But um. I've heard that. And so no, I've always have been. You know. Yeah. Uh, Pier One. Remember Pier One when they came out? I have friends that put themselves through college in the '90s dumpster diving at Pier One. Oh. No true story. Yeah, because those apples are still good. Yeah, those apples, a little <laughs> scratch on them. Um. So, and again, I like to thrift. Right. It's a boombox. So boombox. So boombox. Yeah. yeah. So so I like to thrift. Yep. And over Mother's Day weekend, I was in Louisville. There's a great thrift store there called uh, Fleur de Flea because the the sign of Louisville is the Fleur de Lis. For Okay, got it. So I um, found, I should have brought these in too. I bought a bunch of old cassettes. I wasn't even really a cassette person, right? Oh, I was. But cassettes, way better than CDs. <sighs> cassettes, way more pure because CDs, literally useless the minute you open the package. Scratched, horrible, they suck. Yeah. Did you ever get the cassette thing with a string on it that you could put into your cassette player to play your CD Walkman? No. You could get the little thing that you'd put it in, and it had a little cord on it, and it was like high tech. That's great. Yeah, it was a first conversion kit to listen to a CD in an older vehicle. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my nephew just bought an old school Toyota, like okay. a red Toyota, yep. and he was with me at Florida yep. Flea, and we bought a bunch of cassettes. So I got a couple of Randy Travis. I got- 38 I, Special, always buy a 38 Special CD. I, they didn't have one. Okay. By the way, they were kind of pricey at this point. They place. didn't have it because I already bought it. <laughs> they were like six ninety nine. So I bought Randy. Six ninety nine then. I bought Randy. I bought- Doug um, Stone. There's always a Doug Stone when- I wanted, I would have bought, uh, yeah, what, in a different light, Doug Stone. Uh, a different light or pine box, yeah. you know? Uh, put me in a pine box. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think I talked about this with maybe somebody on a podcast, but it's so cool. And the other cool part of it is mm-hmm. you can record, I got to get some blank cassettes because it still has the function to record cassette to cassette. Okay. Stop it. Could you die? That's how you used to make a playlist. I know. That's how you used to put gonna, it in queue. Next podcast you're on, I'm going to okay. make you a playlist. Okay, I'm going to make you a playlist. Mixtape. Mixtape, and it's actually a mixtape. I bought a 1995 Ford F350 Dually uh, about a year and a half ago. What is ago. a Dually? Dually. It has the big, it has double tires in the back. Okay. You see the fat ones that look like they're yeah. kind of, you know, pregnant. I, <laughs> not, 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 I you prefer know I mean. not to. Okay. Just, I'm big bones. It's, it's Don't big. call me a Dually. <laughs> okay. You would not be a Dually. Um it has dual tires, so it has it's for towing trailers, like a lot of horse trailers yeah. have. Fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Nickers. it has a cassette player. It has a cassette. Okay, player. I'm making you make. We're that's our next goal. And it's a stick shift. Yeah, it is. And it came with a true story. Grave digger from. Shut up. The Tennessee Kentucky line had this thing. He Shut had it since it was new. Up. And it's a seven three diesel stick shift with 200,000 miles on it and this guy has literally handed me a tablet a tablet with every uh, maintenance record in it from 1995 shut your mouth yeah I'll bring it in next time how much was it Uh, he wanted 14 I gave him 12 shut your this should be right this would be honestly who should have a Ford (sighs) do do I need to spell this out when you see a Ford do you say there's a Kelly me Yes. Okay. So this truck, I found a a 38 special cassette wedged down in the seat. Shut your mouth. And I drove down with the windows down, driving a stick shift, loud ass diesel, listening to 38. Hold on loosely. And I was right back in 1995. Hold on loosely. Don't let go. go. I already said it. it. They repeated themselves. Hold on loosely. Don't let go. How do you not let go if you're holding on loosely? <laughs> but it was like. 
I, I seriously went, wow. And this morning I saw, I sent you a picture of it. That 1989 oh, that S, no, no, that was a 1989 S10. But I just sat and went, man, those were simpler times. How did we get so, uh, how do we get so, you know, so? I seriously feel like to, it's so valuable to learn a stick shift. And by the way, it wouldn't be as many wrecks because you can be on your cell phone. Nope. Donnie Minogue. Taught me how to drive a stick shift. I can drive a stick, and no one ever steals a stick shift. Do you ever see a police report, this young man stole a stick shift? No, because no. they'd be like, what the fuck it's is an, this? It's anti-theft. <laughs> it's like better than the club. Ma. Remember the club? <laughs> My kid would call me and be like, ma. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, what? No, there's like, uh, that'd be a good survey. It's better than the club. I'm sorry. Better, remember the club? That's you ratchet on there and like, anyway, that'd be a good question. How many people can drive a stick shift? Yeah. By the way. DM anytime with questions. We're going to work yeah, out DM, a way yeah. to, yeah. We, gotta, uh, hit us up. I would love to know. That'd be a good thing. Yeah. Can, can you drive a stick shift? I learned to drive a stick shift. I was working at, this is true. This sounds made up. Don't, don't some of your childhood stories sound made up? I mean, seriously watching a finale from the backseat of a Cordova? <laughs> with? With uh, my brothers. Oh, your, bro- your brothers' names are great. Yeah. All Jace, right? All Jace, John, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. John and Jim. But I worked at Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hold on. I worked at Moby Dick. Okay. My brother Sean's best friend, Donnie Minogue, was the manager. Okay. He got me a job there. Okay. And uh, Donnie taught me how to drive a stick. What was the car or truck you learned to drive? It in? was a yellow bug. Okay. Named Nancy. Nancy. And and Sean was my brother was too impatient to teach me so Johnny Minogue taught me Donnie did yeah I learned in like a 1979 Jeep red Jeep Willie we're on a yeah on a Moby farm. Dick yeah Moby Willie. Dick Willie's <laughs> it's a long shot but By the way, anyway it's a good time to bring up your do you want to talk about your new song that I you can't just, yeah. yeah it's Let, so good it's probably the best ever yeah I feel it's like it's going to be a smash it, I you can, can't give it away I can't give it away but wait till the video comes out I'm doing a video for this one can I be in it yeah you can be in it right, you've so, been in the other videos alright speaking of which that's why I'm wearing my Waffle House hat today mm-hmm. um, because I just don't want to talk about that I also want to talk about casting and how uh, we're so typecast and I was, Casting. we were in a video together. Joe cast me as his, uh, I don't think you can say white trash. I think that's. Like you can't say white trash anymore. I don't think so. No, Tom so, Maid from Louisville got in trouble for that. So I yeah. won't say that. I'll just cancel that. But what, uh, tra- See, just trashy. Trash. Just trashy. Trash. I like my women on the trashy side. Another 90s hit. Great one. I feel like we should do a whole challenge of that. So scratch that. Just trash. Just trash. Just me. <laughs> Um, but authentic. I was looking for someone authentic. And we were in this whispering Bill Anderson video called Waffle House Christmas. Waffle House Christmas, written by Bill Anderson and some chick named Erin. I forget Erin's last name. It's a great song. It's a great song. I thought it would be a Christmas classic. It has not become a Christmas classic. Well, it's because, you know why? If that would have come out in the 90s, that would have been as big as the Beatles. I feel like it was a you great know, song. Great song. So it was Christmas 2018, not that long ago. No. Pre-COVID. Yeah. And you and I played a family who ended up in a Waffle House at Christmas, and the fry cook at the Waffle House happened to be... Mr. Kid Rock. Yes. And... Ta- oh, our waitress was... Gretchen Wilson. And what did what role did Tanya Tucker play? She was just sitting at the bar next to Bill Anderson eating all of Bill's pancakes. <laughs> That's what she did. And Jeannie Seeley was on the other side. I love Jeannie Seeley. She's so great. I mean, what an icon. Yeah. Jeannie Seeley. I still pinch myself. I think we were in that video. That like, Thank you for that. And I oh, loved our you. fake family. Our fake family was phenomenal. Well behaved. Um, Would that we could all have a fake family. It, I think we need that. Yeah. Be like, listen, I need a break from you guys. I'm going to my fake family for the weekend. Waff, the, our Waffle House family. Meet at the Waffle House. Yep. Smothered in gravy or just smothered. <laughs> smothered and chunked. <laughs> but that was fun. That was so fun. And uh, I just feel like now that I'm kind of in this new phase of my life post a like daily radio show, mm-hmm. doing my own podcast with fun fox like you. FOKs, Friends of Kelly. <laughs> I was going to say. You are one funny fox. I'm one, I'm one funny foxer. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I would love to do more of that. So we have to do more of this stuff. This is what it's about. You do. You are. You've got your little hands and everything. So you this month have a movie coming out with yeah. Gabriel, Byrne, Gabriel Byrne, one of my people. I am a, Kiersey by the way, Clemens. I am a uh, dual citizen. I am an Irish citizen. Oh. So Gabriel Byrne is one of my people. Yes, he is. But I do love <laughs> that you were so typecast. Yeah. I got the role of being the creepy intruder. Yeah. I the, yeah. You got to tell this story because I love it. All right. So I get that. With, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's called an L.A. Minute. It got crushed by the critics. It's been on hold for a minute coming out, but it's finally coming out. And when I when it comes out, I'm going to have a viewing party. Is he still married to Ellen Barkin? I don't know. I don't know. I think. Yeah, I love that. Um, they are. Either way. Y- so either way. DM me and tell me. Yeah, yeah. let us know if you can drive a stick shift and the love life of Gabriel Byrne. And any other questions, comments? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything good. Only if it's good. We're only accepting good DMs today. If you have anything crappy to say, we don't care. Yeah, I will ignore you like yeah. I ignore people who hit on me that I'm not interested in. Yeah. So, speaking of, <laughs> uh, I'm a creepy intruder, and I'm in Savannah, Georgia, because they said- Which is the coolest town. It's the coolest town ever. And I sat around and waited, and they said, okay. I'm like, okay. So, I read the whole script. You know, they give you this book, and you have to read through it. And they tell you, by design, they won't tell you what your role is, because they want you to know the whole script. How'd you get this? So, uh, my old business manager uh, had a contact in L.A., who wanted to put together a movie. And they came out here because Georgia was offering all these huge tax credits. Mm -hmm. That's why they go from state to state. I love that. But they have to find out, or they have to find states that look like L.A., right? (laughs) So how do you find that? So Savannah, Georgia fit the bill. I think Savannah looks like New Orleans. I do too. I love that Pink House restaurant. Anyway. Oh, I went down there. Uh, The piano Mm. player is a friend of mine. I, I met, I was down there for like, Almost probably a month and a half of my life. It feels haunted AF. It is. It is haunted AF. And uh, the pink house. Oh, my God. So great. Uh, Anyhow, uh, we get down there, and I read through the whole cast, and um, I was initially uh, cast as an Uber driver. Mm -hmm. And the reason I was cast as an Uber driver is because it was a speaking role. Because I said, look, I'll be in this thing, but I want a speaking role. I don't want to be an extra. Standing there, sitting on a park bench, reading a book. Uh, so they're like, okay, well, you can be the Uber driver. You have to drive Kiersey and uh, Gabriel. Are they love interest in it? Uh, it's very, very weird, this movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's twisted. <laughs> okay, okay. It is, it is effed up like a soup sandwich. <laughs> So I get in there. I learn all my parts. I, re- I read all my parts. I-, I get the Uber part down. I get the look because, you know, you got to look. They tell you, you know, now look over your shoulder at Gabriel Byrne and, and say you're – so I had it all down, practice and practice. I get there, and uh, first day they say, okay, uh, there's been a change. Oh. I'm like, okay, uh, what's that? Like, uh, you're not going to be the Uber driver anymore. Why? I'm like, uh – why? Well, they wanted a female Uber driver. Oh. By the way, that's how things work on these sets. They'll change stuff you last ready. minute. Yeah, you got to be ready. I did not know this. So I'm like... You studied for the part? You're ready? You, you've... It's like learning your part in a song. I don't learn the guitar player's part. <laughs> I don't worry with the fiddler's part. I don't know the drums. I know Staying the piano. in your lane. I am in my lane. Literally as an Uber driver. In my lane as, as an Uber driver. I'm like, uh... They're like, uh... We only have a couple uh, speaking parts left. Um, they look me up and down. They go, oh, uh, we need a creepy intruder. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I remembered. Dude, I have lived for this moment my whole life. <laughs> I drove. I tell my mom about this. Yes. I tell my wife yeah, about this. She's going to see this. And I remember, oh, my God, the creepy intruder is the one that has to jump in bed with Kiersey Clemens. So you're like, okay. I'm like, oh, boy. Okay. Is that the, is that, is there anything else available? <laughs> They're like, no, that's it. If you want to be in the movie, this is it. And I'm this like, is what your IMBD is going to say. Yeah, oh, it says it. Oh. I, ha- I have that. I'm part of the, uh, what are they, SAG after or after SAG or SAG sometime? No, the SAG Me after. Too. <laughs> Me too, at my age. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I didn't mean to be ripping. I said Dooley and SAG. God, I said, anyway, so SAG after, you get your number. But yeah, it listed out in there. Uh, and my role in the movie is listed as creepy intruder. Not just intruder, but creepy. Creepy. So I wait, I wait, I wait. Nothing happens. We're going to shoot your part today. I literally sat down there for six days. On the seventh day, I said, listen, people, if you're not going to shoot this, I have to go back to I'm Nashville. busy. I'm I important. Things. I got thing. I got Waffle House videos I mean, to shoot. I'm an important songwriter, singer. I've got Denim Fest to but produce. But again, I didn't know when to leave. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just like, all right, a week later, okay. It's literally a 20-minute shoot. I sat there for seven days waiting for a 20-minute shoot. Uh, they sent me home, and they said, come back. And then a week passed, and I'm like, they just, I forgot about it. I'm like, I'm not going to be in the movie. And they called and said, hey, we're shooting your scene tomorrow. Can you come down here? So I had to go back to Savannah, Georgia. Because you're not going to let this creepy intruder opportunity <laughs> pass you if by. If there's anything I don't want to be known as. I mean, when I'm dead and gone... I bet my gravestone will say some somewhere somebody's going to be watching a movie late at night and be like, "That's that's the guy." There are no small actors. There are no small actors. Just creepy intruders. Just creep. So I get down there, and this was serious. They were, it was a whole different thing in the air. They were ready. They said, "Listen, bring bring whatever." Sounds cl- like a pivotal scene, honestly. Very pivotal. It's, it's very very. Uh, uh, I, I was tossed to the ground by Gabriel Byrne. I was wrestled to the ground. He picked me up and threw. Irishman. I'm just Irish anger. It was a big thing. Anyway, so uh, I get down there and they said, just, I said, well, what should I wear? They said, we have a semi trailer full of clothes. We have boots. What's your size? I told my size. I, oh, yeah, we got a whole rack of stuff for you. But wear what you normally wear. Just bring what you're comfortable in and we'll see how it goes. So I get down there and they have all these little RV trailers like horseshoe together. And one said, uh, Mr. Whatever. Uh, Gabriel's character. They're all characters. Mm-hmm. I get to my door. Seamus McMullen. <laughs> yeah. Jiggle me shillelaghs was in the trailer next to me. And I get to my trailer and in big letters it says creepy intruder. Stop it. I have pictures. I will send you pictures after this. Okay. You can post them. And I'm standing there going, holy shit. I am for real the creepy intruder. So I go in my uh, little creepy intruder trailer and they said, we'll come and get you when we're ready. Uh, get your clothes on that you feel like you'd be comfortable wearing. So I put on my boots and my jeans and I go through my shirts. I'm like, that's the shirt. I wear that shirt a lot to play in uh, shows and stuff. So People go wild. The women oh, they, go wild for it. They go mild at this point. <laughs> <laughs> they turn the W yeah. upside down. They're like, yeah, let's see. Look at him. Yeah, he's a creepy intruder. So I get in there. I'm sitting there. I'm kind of, I got my little uh, script and I'm reading through it. I don't want to mess up my lines, you know. Knock on the door, ding, ding, ding. And I'm like, okay, so I open the door. I'm like, yes, got to help you. And they're like, uh, yeah, creepy intruder. They got the clipboard and the radio, and there's a couple guys. And I'm like, uh, okay. Um, they're like, okay, let's go to uh, let's go to wardrobe. We got to check it out. You got to get ready. So I said, okay. So I go walking out, and the director stops the little procession, me and like four people with their little walkie talkies. He goes, oh my god. He goes, you are a creepy intruder. That looks great. What? I'm like, uh, what? He goes, yeah, uh, sets over there. I'm like, and the guy with a little walkie talkie goes, uh, we haven't even been to wardrobe yet. We're <laughs> taking him to wardrobe. Guy goes, no, 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 no. Wait, this is not. Where did we get those boots? And she's like, uh, uh, the lady that was in charge of the shoes goes, no, he, those are his. <laughs> I'm dead. He stops and he looks at me. He goes, you wear this shit around? <laughs> I'm like, yes, I wear this shit around. He goes, oh my god, this is perfect. Go to the set. I'm like. I never even saw the inside of the trailer because they thought my shit was so creepy. They're like, uh, so we head to the set, and then somebody goes, stop, you got to go to hair and makeup, hair and makeup. Now, <laughs> I was wandering around hair and makeup all morning, and there were people, people are like, who's hours. that creepy guy? Yeah, who's that creepy guy? Go call the cops. Creeper. There were people in there in hair and makeup for hours. Like literally an hour and a half. The women, the girls were in there. The women were getting ready. It was literally an hour and a half. Guys were an hour and forty-five. Let's see where this is going. So I'm like, "Oh, we're going to the set." They're like, "No, we got to go buy a hair and makeup first. Get you ready." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> so I walk in hair and makeup, and this little guy, this dainty little fella, he looks at me. He's like, "Oh, what is this?" And I'm like, oh, "I'm here for." Uh, that's horrible. Don't do that. Next and again, please. Hair. Well, that's what he did. I'm adding to well, the you story. Don't have to do it. He basically says, um, "Are you an intruder?" I go, "Yes." He goes, "Are you the creepy intruder?" I go, Stop it. "Yes, I'm the creepy intruder." He goes, "Oh, you're fine." <laughs> I couldn't improve on this, and I go, "Okay," and I was so happy that I didn't have to wait an hour and a half in hair and makeup. At the same time, wildly offended. No, no, no. I was happy. <laughs> I get halfway to set, and this lady starts chuckling, and then they all start chuckling. I kind of look at them, and she goes, you make a really good, creepy intruder. And I'm thinking, these are my clothes. (laughs) I wear this. No makeup. No makeup. He didn't even touch my hair. Why would you touch that Brillo pad? That's what he said. I go, I went my whole life 
being misunderstood until this moment. I've always been a creepy intruder to the world. Yeah. But you, you, it works. I went in and I nailed, I nailed, nailed it. my part. Of course. Uh, you'll see this next month. Yeah, where can we see this? Movie? It's uh, on VOD. What does that mean? Video, Video on, on demand. demand. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where it is. When I find a link, I'll send it to you. Yeah, we'll put it in your bio for the podcast. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's going to be special. The subtext of of the whole podcast, Joe Denham, mm-hmm. is Kelly Ford. the Nashville truth. The Nashville truth. So uh, I think we got to wrap it up. You're obviously going to be a regular. I almost said a regular. I want to I want to just slur a regular like it was irregular. Right, irregular. It was cursive. Ir- irregular. Somebody told me the other day that when I'm drunk, it's not slurring. It's cursive. I'm speaking <laughs> cursive. That's great. And I, that's fancy. You so know? you are so fancy. Thank you. Fancy like Applebee's. Yeah. Um, fancy like. The Nashville truth is yes. kind of all of the subjects. So. Okay. I, I like think we get into like what that is for you. And I think you've had such a, I mean, and and I think it's tough for you to be serious sometimes, but you've had such an interesting journey and you've worked so hard uh, and you are legit and you've had a, a plat, a double platinum yeah. song. You publish, write all your own stuff. Yep. You've worked really harder than anybody I know in this town. And yet sometimes this town hasn't given you, I think, the cred you deserve. I think they still look at me as a creepy intruder. <laughs> I think we just cracked the coat. I think we cracked the coat. They cra- <laughs> because. Maybe I, it's as simple as just changing maybe, your wardrobe. Maybe I need a haircut and, and have someone take me shopping. And maybe they would be like, that guy, you know, no, we seriously spent, uh, since <laughs> since 2012, we have been building the career of the lost uh, Joe Denham. Yeah. And I think that it's, you know, I do have a, no one knows that I have a marketing degree. No one knows that, you know, I can speak uh, one language. <laughs> <laughs> but very, Boy, it's very good. mediocrely. Uh, merely Oakley, you know. Anyway, um, I think they take the character uh, seriously because, you know, I do write a lot of serious songs. I've got, you know, some serious songs. Oh, man. By out. the way, That's this me. Jake... <laughs> Jake, Jake Worthington. Jake Worthington is going to be a huge star, and his song that you sent me wh- right when you wrote it, uh, right when it came, is it yeah. is a smash. Smash. It is a it is a country radio smash. It is a nineteen nineties. It's like smash. a George Strait song. It is a George Strait song, and and people go wait, uh, you 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 wrote that? And I'm like, I, I have hundreds, hundreds of these, hundreds, yeah. and people listen to them differently. I started putting a different name on them when I'd pitch them. Because people just instantly saw Joe Dillon, they're like, okay, here we go. And you just produced your own, fe- now you're a festival owner. You yeah. produced Denim Fest in mm-hmm. Iowa back mm-hmm. in uh, Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day great weekend. Great headliners. You had Dirk Bentley, you had Jelly Roll. Mm-hmm. Um, Big and Rich. Big and Rich. Dylan, Dylan Carmichael. I love Dylan. Leah Turner. Uh, Smash Mouth. Uh, Smash Mouth. There's so many. There's like 16 huge acts. Which is a big accomplishment. So mm-hmm. I'd love to know, and I know somehow you've still keep, you kept your kind of sunny, rosy, uh, slightly twisted because that's why I love you. Attitude about this town because it is a it's a it's a tough town. But what is your kind of overarching Nashville truth? The truth about this town, according to Joe Denham. I mean, if you were to ask me that, and then you were to play this for, or everyone's going to see this, and and you know, I would say this to every record exec. I would say it to everybody on Music Row. I would say that Nashville. If if an alien stopped me in the cornfields of Iowa? Glasgow, Kentucky. Oh. <laughs> you have cornfields in Glasgow. Yeah, we do. If they bumped into me and said, listen, we're thinking about taking our spaceship. We've landed here in Glasgow for obvious reasons. I'm not sure what those are. We're thinking about going to Nashville. We've never been to the planet, let alone the state, and definitely not the city of Nashville. How would you describe? Oh, and we have a guitar. We found a guitar while well, a banjo in Glasgow. And we're going to start a band. We're going to go to Nashville. How would you describe Nashville? I would describe Nashville like that, like this. Nashville is a big private party that unless you're really invited to or you're throwing the party, you might not be welcome. So under the guise of music and creativity, everybody feels that they're obligated and they're um, – they deserve it would be a better word. They would they deserve an opportunity to play their music and to tell their stories. 
And Harlan Howard said it best, um, not the name drop. After he said not the name drop, he did say this. <laughs> we were in a writer's Joe, room. <laughs> Joe, stop name dropping. Stop name dropping. We're in a writer's room, and somebody was just just bitch session about Nashville, and Nashville wasn't this, and Nashville's a private party, and they don't want you in, and they don't, unless you're in, and they were just ranting and raving. And Harlan Howard looked up, and he said, no one sent for you. And this guy stopped, and he said, excuse me? He goes, no one asked you to come here. No one invited you to this private party. You have to bring it more than the next guy. And I've never forgot that. And I was like, wow, uh, I might have had it all wrong. It is a private party, and that's what forces me to stay, and it was forces me to be better. And it, what, it's what forces me to write and that song that I just read to you off air uh, because I'm trying to be better. I want them to go, you need to get your guitar and come into this private party and play your ass off. Oh, my God, chills, dude. That's a great. That's, that's great. So come to Nashville. Be patient. I mean, it's just been a quick 20 years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> seems like 50. But um, no, you got to just, you got to be better. You have to be better. And that's what, again, I'm not leaving the private party before I see the finale of the fireworks. That's right. That's so a I'm going to be here. Way to end it. That's yeah. a Thank going, you for having me on, by the way. We're going out to light sparklers and blow something up. Yeah, Tannerite. So thank you. Thank you. you. Funny fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. You funny old. Fox. You funny old fuck. <laughs> friend of Kelly. He's funny not Kelly. old. Yeah. He's just an old friend of mine.